Mr. Bowtie's Texas High School Sports Machine is driven by Henry Finley and McCombs Ford West, a proud supporter of all area local sports. McCombs Ford West, simply the best. And by San Antonio Masonry and Steel. Hey folks, Mr. Bowtie here. Keep banging home that subscribe button on your screen so that way you can stay up to date on all the great area high school and local sports coverage, TV, radio, and cheap web streams refuse to cover. And check out my Twitter at Mr. Bowtie1982. It's fast, it's free, and the UIL will love you if you do it. Thanks so much and enjoy the show. A showdown to determine who the second place finisher out of 12-5-A1 and a home playoff game taking place at Rutledge Stadium is San Antonio Wagner playing host in New Braunfels Canyon. Neither team was in the tournament last year. Both teams will be in the tournament this year. Winner finishes second will force somebody to come down from Austin or College Station to play a first round playoff game next week. The loser will have to go on the road to College Station or Austin for a playoff game. Let's take a look at the district standings for both 11 and 12-5-A1. If you don't want to sit through the explanation, check out the link in the description for where you can fast forward to get to the highlights. Here are the district standings for 12 and 11 5A Division 1. The good news is the eight playoff teams are known. The bad news is most of the seeding is not. In 12, Bulverde Smithson Valley has already clinched the district title. The winner of Wagner and Canyon will finish second and host a playoff game. The loser will finish third and go on the road. Seguin is locked into fourth. Seguin and Smithson Valley will play on Friday in what amounts to a scrimmage. In District 11, it's a lot more complicated. Cedar Park can't finish higher than third while College Station can't finish lower than second. College Station wins district if Georgetown loses to Cedar Park. If Georgetown wins, Console wins it if they win as well. Georgetown will win the district if they win and Consolidated loses. Did you get all that? Let's get to the action. Let's check it all out presented by McCombs Ford West and San Antonio Masonry and Steel. Hey, this player stole my wardrobe. Actually, it's the always fashionable Zephenius Tuiana. Forget about the football game, people rushed to see him and it caused a traffic jam. First half was mostly defense, second half was mostly offense. The Adams Family was a popular TV show in the 1960s. It was also popular in this game if you were a New Braunfels Canyon fan. Off a Wagner turnover, Deuce Adams threw a 36 yard touchdown pass to his brother Eli Adams, which would be a common theme. Wagner though led 9-7 at halftime thanks to his safety. Second half, Canyon coach Travis Bush told the Adams Family to play more pitch and catch. Opening possession, Deuce threw for Eli Eli pass incomplete, but the defender never turned around to look for the ball. Defensive pass interference. Very next play, Deuce ran play action. Eli ran by everybody wide open in the Cavender's end zone for his second touchdown reception. 14-9, Adams family. Halftime, we, we talked in the locker room about we got to get that connection going again, come out strong and win a game. They busted the coverage on one of those plays. We crossed them up and he found me open. The connection, very strong. Next possession, Deuce Adams pass complete not to his brother, but to Xavion Nolan, ran around the defense on a 46-yard gain down to the Thunderbird 4, led to a touchdown, Canyon up 21-9. Wagner now 4th and 1 from the Canyon 25, handoff to Jeremiah Cherry, remember he had the big game against Buda Hayes, picks up the first down to move the sticks. Two plays later, it's a toss sweep left. No, it isn't. It's Cameron Smith throwing to a wide open EJ Bell in the end zone, 22 yards on the score. 21 16, Canyon still led going to the fourth. Field goal by Canyon made it 24 16, Cougars. Under eight minutes to go, 24 16 still the score. Smith, late pitch left to Markel Ford. He fumbled earlier in the game that led to a Canyon touchdown. He held on to the ball this time, ran left and around the defense, 47 yards into the scoring zone. Two point conversion tied it at 20. 24. Next, Wagner possession, fourth and three from their own 47. Thunderbirds gambled. Smith might have had room to run to get the first down. Instead, threw across the field too high for Cherry, and the gamble did not pay off. We found a way to keep our composure, and uh, we just did our assignments, and it ended up working out. We listened to Coach Garcia because 
Always got to listen to Chris Garcia. That would be defensive coordinator Matt Garcia. Two minutes remaining. Canyon Drive now facing their own fourth down. Fourth and fourth. The Wagner 41. They too went for it. Deuce Adams found Brandon Seely on the sideline. Kept his foot in bounds on the green for the catch to move the chains. Two plays later. Final 90 seconds. Deuce Adams threw deep left again for his brother Eli. And it worked again. 18 yards. Their third scoring connection of the contest. 30 to 24 with 108 remaining. PAT attempt was aborted, leaving the door open for the Thunderbirds to drive down and win it. Fourth and 16 at midfield, 39 seconds remaining. Smith Prayer went unanswered. Canyon can do the can-can. 30-24 to the final. They get a home playoff game and their first nine-win regular season since 2005. They're able to run the ball better, get them uh, manning up, and then finding the open routes. We're like a family. So whenever it gets to fourth down, we get tough. And in the off season, we did a, a, a gassers, and it was a lot of running. We just came together as a family, and we worked, and it ended up working out. Canyon will stay home for the first round, while Wagner will go on the road. Reporting from Converse, I am Mr. Bowtie.